All right, I think we have enough people to get started here. Once again, welcome everyone to the Packet Trap MSP Acceleration Program webinar. On today's agenda, we are going to cover what the MSP acceleration process is, what kind of materials are included, and um, how you can use it to your advantage uh, combined with Packet Trap MSP software to make the most out of your business. Um, so once again, my name is Natan Ovadia. I'm uh, one of the partner management specialists here in the Packet Trap division of Quest Software. And all I do pretty much every, every day is I work with our customers post-sale and ensure that they are making money off of their service contracts. I've worked with um, small one to two family operations who are just getting into the recurring contract model. I've also worked with 40 to 50 employee size organizations to help um, leverage the most out of their Packet Trap MSP software. And um, just in a nutshell, what the acceleration process is, it's a, it's a free consulting program. You have access uh, with purchase of Packet Trap MSP software that allows you to take all the guesswork on how to build, price, structure, and market and sell your managed services offerings. So before we go into the program details, I think it would be very wise to spend a little bit of time on going on the MSP maturity model. Um, the term managed services uh, can be very convoluted, and many people have very many different have a lot of different um, definitions for the program. So I think it's going to make sense to cover what I like to call reoccurring contractual models um, in you can use and how you can use Packet Trap MSP software to get recurring contracts for your customers. All right, just bringing up another slide deck here. All right, what I brought up on my screen is what we like to call the MSP maturity model. And it describes how service providers and MSPs across North America are supporting their clients on a monthly basis. And of course, the most historical program offering of them all would be the break fix model, right? This one's pretty simple. Uh, you manage different clients. They have network failures or questions, could be help desk issues, could be anything related to IT and they give you a call because they have an issue, and if you have time, you will dispatch one of your engineers or go on site or remotely to fix it. Right, real basic model, um, good for you know establishing the trust, establishing that relationship with the clients that you're supporting, but falls short in a couple of different sections. Because you're waiting, for the phone to ring, you're, you're waiting for business to happen. And it's all client initiated. Therefore, um, it's unpredictable. You can't really project how much revenue is coming in on a monthly basis, judged predominantly on break fix model. So um, in these other th three program offerings we're going to explore, these are all different types of recurring contractual program offerings that you can adopt by using a program like Packet Trap MSP. Um, a very entry level service model that you can adopt is what we like to call a level one or reactive program offering. And it's very basic in terms of a functionality standpoint. All it entails from a Packet Trap perspective is that you are monitoring all the devices on your client's environment and you are being alerted as those devices are trending towards failure. That is pretty much it from a functionality standpoint. The biggest um, mistake or the biggest challenge that I've seen with service providers just getting into the managed services space is they try to resell the features and the functionality of their RMM tool like Packet Trap and try to pass that on to their customers. While that may be in typical in um, you know resold services field, because you're using Packet Trap MSP as a tool to provide services to your clients, we always want to reinforce 
the program benefits of the service model versus the, ver versus the features and functionality of the program itself. So instead of reselling things like alerting, monitoring, and patch management, right, all valuable features that are marketable to you as service providers, um, we've really got to think about what the program offering is doing for them. And what it's really doing is it's reducing the time that it's taking to fix their issue, right? Reducing the mean time to resolution. Okay, that sounds great, but what does that do? Well, taking, taking, taking that a step further, um, reducing the mean time to resolution is going to ensure that, your that their employee's productivity is going to be um, is going to increase their employee productivity and to decrease downtime. And because we're doing that, we can always um, provide a lot of cost and, cost and savings to that client. So it's always the, the cost and savings, employee productivity matters that um, relate a whole lot more collectively to your clients versus the program benefits and the program features. All right, um, so in this level one program offering, it's a very important to note that there's still a very much a reactive element to it. Um, because you would be alerting and monitoring the devices, um, you can still have a, a billable time unit because for any issues that do come up, you know, that's where you can bill at your normally scheduled hourly rate. Um, and you can even give them a discount when that time comes. But the point of these program offerings is that at least you have some sort of recurring contractual models. Even if the level one model is, you know, at $100, $200, $300 per month, it still comes at a very um, entry-level model, and everything else would be break-fix above and beyond this. So, the next program offering on the maturity scale is what we like to call a preventative maintenance or proactive or level two service offering. From a functionality standpoint, what you and your technicians would be doing on a monthly basis is instead of just being alerted as those devices are trending towards failure for your customers, you are building out a lot of preventative maintenance and scripting and patch management features um, in which you wouldn't in your previous level one model. So with Packetrap MSP, you can automate a lot of scheduled actions, scheduled scripts, um, anything that traditionally you'd have to go on site for, you can do remotely. So because we want our level two service offering to be more comprehensive of their complete network environment, we always wanna think about incorporating things like um, antivirus, patch management, you know, everything from a, tech, from a technology standpoint that would go into servicing our clients on a preventative maintenance structure. If, if we think about how service providers were servicing the SMB industry, you know, 10, 15 years ago before the advent of RMM tools like Packetrap MSP, um, you know, one could still provide a preventative maintenance structure or a recurrent contractual model, but it would just take a lot more time to provide that service offering because you, you would have to go on site. Um, you wouldn't have remote accessibility tools to do that. So that's where the benefit of a tool like Packet Trap MSP comes into place is because we can automate a lot of those functions remotely and we can schedule them uh, by just providing a little bit of labor up front um, in addition to some ongoing preventative maintenance. All right, um, so the, the last kind of bucket that goes into the level two or proactive service offering is to bundle in a series of blocks of hours that your clients can use at any time during that month. A lot of the customers that I've worked with, they build out um, you know, two, three, four hours in that service offering at a reduced labor rate combined with the rest of the service model to ensure that when they do have issues, it just takes the hours away from those blocks of hours. 
I'd say the level two service offering is probably the most popular of the service models just, just because it fits um, if it's the rest of if it's most of clients' environment because it's going to um, it's going to capture a lot of things that they need on an ongoing basis and it just fits their maturity level. The last service model that I want to explore is called the level three or the fully managed service model. This is what most MSPs think about when they think of the term quote unquote managed services. <clears throat> providing uh, a fixed fee price for unlimited support, including preventative maintenance, would be the best description of this model. So traditionally and historically, when um, people who are just getting into just getting into selling recurring contracts like the ones that we've been discussing, they only think about the fully managed or the level three service model. And while I do think that it's a good fit for some SMBs out there, it, it's of course not the only fit, which is why we've introduced uh, the, these two initial service offerings, the level one and the level two. Many times I've um, you know, spoken to service providers who right off the back um, go into selling a, a fully managed contract at X number of dollars per month. But later, they find out that they're that they're spending, you know, fivefold or tenfold the amount of times of hours than their projected labor rate. So they end up losing money off of their service contracts. That's why we put this fully managed contract at the end of the maturity scale, because it should only be offered to customers in which you have a um, which you have a historic track record of you know knowing how much support time is necessary to deliver a fixed fee type contract. So the reason why we have the three different types of program offerings is because if you take a look at all the SMBs across North America, um, the way that a law firm in you know, Manhattan leverages technology for their business may not be the same way that a manufacturing facility in the Midwest operates, right? We really got to think about what happens to the network or whom gets affected when a network failure happens. That's going to give you more of the foundation and the basic understanding for what type of structured managed services agreement is going to be the best approach for the customers that you're working with. And that statement can go through, can go true for your, for your break fix customers as well as any new prospects that you see down the road. So um, here we've uh, included some initial pricing structures down below, and I'll go over these in a little more detail in depth. But just understand that the average price per user or the total contract cost that you ultimately you know, sell each month to your clients is, of course, going to increase with each level on the maturity model. So at the entry level standpoint, we're talking about you know, 10 bucks per user per month for the monitoring and for the maintenance and going all the way up to about 150, sometimes even a little bit more for a fully managed. It all really depends on the scope of services that are really being included. And if we think about what really goes into a managed services contract in terms of pricing, those are all the software costs that are incurred to support your client on a monthly basis. That's gonna include packet trap, your service automation tool, and anything that's resold like antivirus or backup plus all of your ongoing labor services to provide services. That's going to include block hours, that's in going to include maintenance for your RMM tool, um, and any sort of consulting services that we're tacking on. All right, um, what I'm doing now is I'm going to go ahead and switch views to an online portal we have for our clients. So I've brought up um, the MSP Acceleration Group page. Uh, this is for all of our customers. And it really, as you can see, we've um, structured a one through five step process all the way from delivering and developing your service offerings to structuring the operations of your SLA, 
pricing your service offering, whom to prospect it to, and how to sell it. So we take you through each step of that process, and I want to go over a couple of the different workbooks that we have available for you. So we have a designated workbook or correlated workbook within each five steps of the program. And you'd be working with either myself or another partner management representative to help you walk you through that workbook. So on step one, we just go over the service offerings in a little more detail. Don't want to spend too much time on this, but um, you know, we have a comprehensive matrix that goes through in a little more detail on what are the more kind of intensive technical program features that, de that need to be inclusive in your service offering. And then most importantly, when it comes to sales, what are the benefits? Um, what are the things that we're trying to project to the customers that we are selling this to? So keep in mind, we always want to talk on the high level structure of you know, reduction in mean time to resolution, cost and savings, um, and higher employee productivity, because those are more of the valuable elements that relate to your clients. All right. So the next document that I wanted to cover here is going to be uh, the SLA creation workbook. And I like to call this the real meat and potatoes of the MSP acceleration process because a lot of our pricing, sales, and marketing is all based on this workbook. Essentially what we're doing is we're creating a process for you, your technicians, and the rest of your company to structure your, um, your one, two, or three tiered managed services, managed services model. So what we're looking at is a sample list of common technical services that are typically required to fulfill a managed services agreement. When we on the acceleration team were trying to think of all the services to put into our model here, we know that it had to include three different types of services that come from column A. So we knew that one of the largest, largest elements that goes into this would be all of the packet trap MSP functions, right? all of the ongoing maintenance features that need to be included in a monthly basis. Updating your policies, updating your alerts, um, managing backup, managing antivirus and security, and uh, managing ongoing consulting services. So anything with a service type of PTMSP function would be a deliverable of our product. The second element that went into column A would be any of the third-party services you're using in conjunction with Packetrap. You know, while, while Packetrap MSP is a very comprehensive product, uh, many of, of our customers leverage uh, third-party backup tools for example, to, uh, to complete a service offering that they're selling to their customers. So if there's um, something that you use in your you know, technical tool belt to provide services to your, to your clients, then we'll go ahead and mark that as a third-party um, third service type. The last thing that goes into our service type would be all of the technical labor skill sets that you and your employees have in order to provide services. So if it's just technical labor that you're providing or just consulting-based labor, we want to factor that in into our service offering. And as you can see in column B, we've categorized all the services you're providing in terms of what could be considered part of the network, part of the workstation, backup security, and consulting elements. So what we'll do together in a one-on-one -on -one process is um, I, you and myself or you and your other partner management representative uh, will parse through the, the sample list of services, just kind of hack it down to what services are going to be part of your process. And we want to think about that as it's going to relate to your level one model, your level two model, and your level three model. So every company's SLA creation workbook is a little bit different. Um, you know, I've worked with um, 
security exclusive companies that have no fa backup or workstation essentials. It's all network focused and security focused. And you know, I've worked with companies who place a little more focus on help desk that have, um, you know, hard focus on the individual and on the user itself. So everyone's SLA creation workbook will be a little bit different. Okay, and then over the course of the next two or three calls, what we do is we take those sample list of services and we go ahead and paste them into this next workbook. We'll then go through each service row by row and we'll talk about how the service is performed. If it's gonna if it's a technical labor type service, if it's a monitoring service, if it's resold, if it's a reporting service. Um, and then we'll decide if that technical service is a requirement for your level one model, your level two model, and your level three model. Just going through an, an example of policy management, um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the product itself, uh, policy management would be the routine monthly process of updating all of the alerts and monitors for all your customers. So because this is a fundamental you know, aspect of the software itself, we know that there's some element of policy management that would need to be included in our process for each of our three different service offerings. So that's why we see that, uh, there's, that there's an X included at each service offering. We'll then run through this example and we will determine on average how long that you as a company will be spending monitoring your policies or updating your policies on a monthly basis. So these are all fractions of an hour here. Taking another example for let's say patch management, you know, patch management is one of those technical services that we want to reserve for a preventative maintenance program like a level two model. So that's why when we're building up the service offering, uh, we've included patch management for level two and level three, but left it as an option for level one. So that's kind of the consulting process that we'll go through once we've listed all of your individual items here. The great thing about this workbook is that we only have to do this process once because we're not building it out for an individual client initially, we're building out a whole model to fit each of your three program offerings. We'll still have the opportunity to tweak um, you know, your, your specific contractual SLAs for each of your customers because we know that each customer is very different, but this is just to, to create a sample customer template. Okay, um, so going back into our exploration group, just so you can see the, the flows of the process. Uh, once we cover step two, building your service level agreement, then we go into pricing your managed services. And that's where the foundation of the SLA creation workbook really provides us steps to move forward in the pricing tool. So I brought up our pricing tool here. As I said before, you know, the only two predominant factors that go into pricing your managed services offering are all of the software costs that go into your service offering as well as all of the ongoing labor services. So simply put, that's what we cover in this workbook. First step in doing so is to determine all of the applicable labor rates that you have in your organization. Let's say, for example, that your business has um, a different, different rate that you're paying for different technicians who are administering the responsibilities. So maybe we have a tech one rate that's going to cover all of the admin, monitoring, and alerting functionalities, where maybe your internal cost is a little bit less, but your client cost is also a little bit less as well. And then let's say we have a tech rate two that's going to cover all of the reactive time, um, all of the consulting time, uh, and any of the real hard-earned labor. So maybe because um, you know John the technician is 
have as a higher salary, we have them as a higher internal cost on an hourly basis. But the client cost is also a little more expensive. And maybe we have a consulting rate that's going to come up with a different internal cost and of course maybe it has the same client client facing cost. So however many different rates that you have, whether it be one rate or ten rates, uh, we can accommodate to your business here. Next thing that we want to capture are all of the onboarding fees or any of the upfront projects that are incurred with signing up a new client. So uh, just so you can see the structure of the workbook, let's say we have five hours for service X and you know, 10 hours for service Y at our two different labor rates, the calculator is going to pull up the labor rates from the previous screen and apply them to the quantity of hours that we've inputted. Therefore, we know that uh, we have 15 total projected project hours at two different labor rates, which comes up to about $1,600 as an upfront pro project price to the client. Okay, next, um, next step would be to uncover all of our software costs, which of course um, we want to find out how much you're paying us, how much you're paying Package Trap on a monthly basis, which is going to determine your total Package Trap cost per client. We mark up the price of that and factor in the total package trap price to the client into each of your contracts. So we know at a 25% markup, um, $66 is going to be factored in into the total price of the managed services offering. So that would be the top section for all of your package trap pricing. And down below would be anything that's resold. So if you have partnered up with a, a third party backup company or third-party antivirus company, and, and you want to build that in into your service offering, that's one of the things that's, very, that's become very common, especially over the course of the last five to seven years in the managed services model. So let's say this um, agnostic backup storage company is charging you 50 cents per gig, and you're not providing any backup services on your level one model but you're backing up five gigs on your level two and 10 gigs on your level three, just to provide some real basic, simple examples, then we know that your costs are 250 and $5 respectively on a monthly basis. Very similarly to our packet trap pricing markup model, we will also mark up the price of your third party programs so we know how much is being factored in into your clients on a monthly basis. So we can become real flexible and real creative when it comes to your different models here. All right, um, last real set of data that we really need to factor in here is the labor piece of the puzzle, right? How many labor hours are you providing on a monthly basis? That's going to give us some more factual numbers into how we should be pricing our service offering. So all this sheet consists of is us going into our SLE creation workbook and copying and pasting our services and their applicable labor times into our spreadsheet. The only thing that we need to do now is to factor in our labor rates. So once we plug in our labor rates, we know how much each technical service is costing us and um, how much it's going to be projected to the client based on our labor times by our labor rates. So we know for our three program offerings that it's going to take us roughly two hours a month to monitor, maintain, and manage a customer who's on a level one agreement, a little less than eight hours on a level two agreement, and a little more than 12 hours on our fully managed or fixed fee agreement. So now what do we do with all of this data? Well, now our summary sheet is going to total up all of our software costs and prices based on the values from the software cost sheet, plus our labor costs and prices, uh, which come from the sheet that I just shown you. So the sum of your software costs and prices to your labor costs and prices will determine your total contract cost and total contract price.
the ratio of both of these values will determine our overall contract margin, as well as give us a couple of different pricing scenarios for how we want to price this out to our customers. Before we get on the pricing models per se, I want to talk a little bit about just the, the overall contract margin. And I'm going to go back into our maturity model, uh, which was the basis for our conversation. So each of these um, different program offerings has different ranges of margins that we want you to generate off of your service contracts. So needless to say that um, we, we generally put our margins a little bit lower on the level one side to keep costs low, um, and a little bit higher on the level two and level three side because we know we're factoring in more services. So um, that's going to give us more information to modify or update our overall contract margins. So I go into our last sheet, the proposal summary, and we see that we have three, um, three different columns. Our total proposal price, which is no different from our summary sheet, a margin override option, and a total price override option. So pretending that um, this example was your pricing tool template for each of you that's on the line, we would be selling our level one contract at 50% margin, which would total about $265 per month, 60% at level two at about $700 per month, or 62% margin, which would get us about $1050 per month. But let's pretend that we wanted to be a little more competitive in our pricing offering, and we wanted to reduce our margins for our level one program offering. I can reduce our margin from 50% to 30%, which would let me know that we should be pricing our level one offering at about $187 per month versus $264. We know that you'll be generating less profit on a monthly basis, but the benefit of the level service model, of the level one service model for you, is just to get that recurring contractual um, model on a monthly basis. We know that you're going to get more revenue from the additional break fix time project time and consulting time. This is just an initial service offering so that you're getting some recurring contracts on a monthly basis. So if we go lower on the level one, if uh, let's say we reduce our level two model from 60% um, to, I don't know, let's say 55%, then we know instead of our pricing our service model at about $711 per month, we're now pricing at, at about 640 but let's say on a level three model, we wanted to generate you know, 70% margin. We see that this figure is, um, is more expensive than our 1050 at 62%. So after we spend some time adjusting your pricing models, we'll go ahead and you know, tailor our specific total margins to what you're comfortable with. Generally speaking, they go on the low range of about 25% to about 65 to 70%. 70 All right, so the pricing tool template will be used as your main guideline for how to price all of your customers. So we'll just, make, we'll just have to make a few tweaks and adjustments to fit the exact needs of your clients when we're working with each and every one of them. Um, but you'll use one template just as a sample customer profile. Um, just a quick note on what's the, the mo what's the preferred methodology to price the services off to your customers. There's three main rules of thought. One would be the total contract price, which are these numbers in row eight. The second would be on a per user basis, and the third would be on a per device basis. So we've given you options for all of those three different types of models. We definitely prefer going with the per end user or the total contract model 
because it's a better depiction over the benefits what you're providing to your customers. The, the reason why we like to stray away from the, from the per device model is that imagine you are on your sales call with your client, with your prospect, and everything is going well. They're asking how much it costs. And then immediately out of the gate, you start saying, well, well, Joe, it's going to be you know, X number of dollars per PC and Y number of dollars per server. As soon as you start saying those, um, that type of statement, you'll begin to see the business owner or the person that you're speaking with trying to count up the number of devices that they have, which essentially they're trying to mitigate their cost. So it doesn't provide from, for a well-structured sales model, um, and it doesn't really fit to our managed services offerings. So going with either a per end user or total contract model will ensure that you're supporting one of their, one of their employees, one of their users, rather than just a device or a machine or you know, a piece of network equipment. Remember, with our benefits, we're always trying to project, uh, we're trying to save them money and in increase employee productivity, not provide you know, technical maintenance on a device even though in, in, in actuality that's what we're doing, but it's just a little bit different from what we want to project to the client. All right. So going back into our acceleration group here, steps two and three are really the, the forefront of the initial you know three to four calls that we'll be going over. Once we discover or once we develop your pricing tool, we'll then we then have a workbook that goes into which of your potential prospects do we need to start targeting first. If you have a lot of customers who are on a, the break fix model, then um, start targeting which of those customers would be a good fit for each of your program offerings. And then we have a, a lot of sales resources that help you leverage you know, the program benefits of your model versus the technical features. So I don't know if we have too much time to go into all of those documents, but uh, we have PowerPoint templates, um, Excel workbooks, uh, sales presentations, and PDFs to help you ensure that you are reinforcing the program benefits versus the program features. All right, so um, hopefully that gives you guys a good high-level understanding of the MSP Acceleration Program. I know we haven't um, talked about all the resources, but um, the SLA Creation Workbook and the Pricing Tool really provide the foundation for our model. And then anything, that, anything else that you guys need from a marketing or sales perspective um, can be leveraged with either myself or your other partner management representative to ensure that you're making the most out of Packet Trap MSP software and your service contracts. You know, at the end of the day, we want you guys to become successful, um, not only in the, out of the good nature of our hearts, but of course that we know it's going to benefit us as well. So we want you guys to do well. We have all of the technical resources you need to become successful, as well as the business and sales materials that you need to be successful. So I want to use this time to open it up to questions. If you guys have a question, feel free to put it in the chat window. And I will be sure to answer them. Just going to give it a couple of minutes here to see if there are any other questions. I'll give you a couple minutes to go ahead and gather your thoughts. All right. Um, doesn't look like there's too many questions out here. Um, if you guys need to get in touch with uh, Get in touch with me. I'm 
including my contact email at the end of this uh, PowerPoint slide deck right here. If you are working with, a, with an account manager or sales representative, please um, feel free to use them as your main source of contact. And if you want to know more information or want to see more materials on the acceleration process, you can go ahead and give me a call and we can do a joint call together. Uh, if you are a package drive MSP customer already and uh, haven't, haven't leveraged the tools of the acceleration process already, give me a call and we can go ahead and start the process. And I can also get you set up on our community website. All of the resources, workbooks are all located on there as well. So once I invite you to the program offering, we'll be able to um, get you set up and take it from there. All right, well, I um, want to thank everyone for their time. Thank you very much. Looking forward to uh, working with everyone, if I haven't spoken with you already. Um, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and um, have a great day.